brothers and sisters, welcome to day three of our 33-day journey to our Eucharistic Lord. Today we are speaking about the four last things, or that's the theme that Matthew Kelly has for our day reflections. And I, I, I encourage you to, you know, continue reading daily the reflections. And if you go to catholictt.org, you will also have access to our audio where we've made an audio version of the readings of the day that you could listen to in the car, or maybe you might like choose to light a candle at home and have the lights dim and, and listen to the reflection and while meditating upon it. So, okay, so today the four last things. Well, we already kind of spoke about in the first video where I spoke about Ralph Martin and his book, Fulfillment of All Desire. And in that book, Ralph says that, you know, it's really helpful for us Christians to have a biblical worldview. That we don't just live in the world with any kind of view. We, we live according to scripture and according to revelation and according to what Jesus has told us about reality and about things that we can't only if discover on reason alone. But there's a kind of a knowledge that, that, that complements well with our reason, and that is the knowledge of faith, the knowledge of divine revelation. And we see there that the Lord has revealed to us what, what the, in the Christian tradition is called the four last things, which is death, judgment, hell, and heaven. And we've been speaking a lot about heaven as the goal. You know, this is the view of our life is to get to heaven, to, to be with God, to be saved. I want to speak a little bit about today about death and, uh, and, and a few other things. It might seem a bit morbid, death. But in fact, you know, the Christian tradition has a, a, a Latin phrase called memento mori. And this was a phrase of the monks and the, the deep contemplatives of our Christian tradition where they would say to themselves every day, memento mori, memento mori, remember you will die. Now, this seems a bit morbid, a bit, it can be a little bit traumatic for us. But in fact, if we see it in the right view, it's freeing. It's actually quite freeing to meditate on death if you have faith. Because remember, St. Paul says that Christians do not grieve like, like people who don't believe in the resurrection, like people who don't believe in Jesus Christ. And so we shouldn't let death surprise us or come up upon us without us having the habit of meditating on it. I think if we meditate on, on death, uh, that, it, that it is a moment that we have to pass from this world to the next, then when that moment comes, we're less taken by surprise. We get better, more better prepared for it. Although in many ways, well, how can we truly prepare for death? Other than to rely completely on the grace of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, to, to, for that peace and for that confidence to meet the Lord. Now, death, me memento, memento mori. A few years ago, when right before COVID was happening and we didn't really know what COVID was and there were many very tragic stories and throughout COVID, there were many tragic stories. And it, it dawned on me personally in my own life that, you know, I could possibly die. You know, and uh, being a priest, I'd be expected to go and anoint people and to be on the front lines. And, and uh, I, I really started to think about, for the first time, about my own death. And at first, it was quite daunting. But something happened in my own spiritual life that it put things into perspective for me tremendously. And I started to realize the things in my life that, that were taking the place of God, if you wish. And so I had to reorder my life and I, and I led to uh, trying to surrender myself. And I suppose this is what consecration is about, that we're working towards. It's a, it's a death. It's a, it's a death to the, all the things in our life that, that, us, that block our pilgrimage to heaven. It's a death to, to the things that are where we waste time on trivial things and not enough on God. It's, it's a death to, to making ourselves more available to God. And I suppose when I did that, I made that concrete decision and I started to make a concrete decision in my own life to waste more time in prayer before the tabernacle, to, to spend more time in thanksgiving after mass. I saw a complete change in my life, a radical transformation of my life. And that, no doubt, I believe it was from the grace of God. But when we meditate on death and we meditate it on heaven, and we, we also have to be sober and realize, well, you know, if I don't walk in the ways of the Lord, there's a, there's a possibility that I could be eternally lost, which is what we call hell. It's what Christ talked about hell. You know, there's a possibility of, 
of not being with God forever by following my own way, not repenting, not really trying to come in, in view with God's mercy so He could transform us. And then there's that moment that we all face a death, which is judgment, where we'll come before the Lord and we will see our whole life before the awesome mystery of God, all the things that we could have done, the things that we feel God. But we will also see in that moment of judgment all the things we did do to God, the ways we corresponded to grace. But we want to be ready for those moments. And the Eucharist is the source by which we will be best prepared to meet Jesus because God has left us the Eucharist, left us himself in his sacrament to, to transform us and strengthen us for the moment of death. See, the Eucharist is, is the bread of life to prepare us for that transition between earthly life to heavenly life. Central. So brothers and sisters, stay tuned on our Eucharistic journey. May the Lord bless you. May he cover you with his grace. Amen. Thank you.